Greetings and welcome to today's training program on how to use constant contact. Frankly, I struggled with the information available when I first started using constant contact and similar email marketing programs. So I thought I would just share with the world at large and, uh, what I've learned and try to hopefully demystify it a little bit. So I'm gonna just go through a few concepts here and as we go, I'll be showing you exactly how to do it in a live demonstration. So here we go. First thing, is kind of the overall process that we are going to go through. The topics are, you know, establishing your basic information, creating your lists, create your email content, create your campaign, and then viewing and interpreting reports. And it has to be done in a certain order, which is part of the reason this is a little bit confusing to the average person. And then we're going to go into the basic information, like, you know, things like um, uh, you've got to create an account, of course, and then you select a plan based on your budget and what you want to accomplish. And then there's going to be creating lists, um, uploading your contacts, and I'll show you how to do that. List selection when you go to create your campaign because you can't create a campaign without a list. That's why it has to be done in a certain order. Then when you go to create a campaign, how do you actually create it and what's the, the, uh, the creative process like and what do you put in there and so forth? And we're gonna to start today with a demonstration of just sending a one-time email to a list of people. So we'll cover in detail how to create that campaign, uh, how to create the content for the email, how to personalize it, and then how to schedule the email so that it just automatically uh, occurs. So here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna go ahead and start from the very beginning. I'll just go into my desktop here. And we're gonna start by the first thing, which is your basic info. Well, your basic info is creating, um, creating a plan and uh, in constant contact, let me just open up constant contact here. I'll show you how that looks. All right, so you'll have some kind of a plan established and you can, you can view that if you've already done it by going in here to your account and viewing the details of what kind of plan you have. But again, it's really just establishing an account with constant contact. Some email marketing programs offer a uh, free plan. I'm not saying that Constant Contact does that now. I don't really know. We have a paid plan that I use, but this is an example of what a plan looks like. It'll tell you what kind of plan you're on. Um, you can see view plans and pricing here, how many contacts you can uh, create, how much it's going to cost you, and so forth. So you basically just have to sign up for a Constant Contact account and create a plan. The next step is creating a list. So it's a little confusing. Uh, that's why I'm helping people here is that, you know, where do you go? Where does it say list? So it doesn't really say. So what you have to do is you have to go into contacts first up here on the upper left where I'm pointing. And once you're in contacts, you're gonna see that you can add contacts here. But notice there's lists, segments, tags, contacts, insights. What we wanna go through, go to is lists here first because before you can do any kind of email marketing, you have to create a list. So how do you do it? You gotta find, go to contacts, go to lists, and then you're gonna do, you're gonna click create a list. You're gonna give that list a name. I'll just call it CC demo one for now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically then have a name, but we haven't added any contacts to that list. It says this list doesn't have any contacts. Oh, what do you do? Click add contacts. Okay, so what, we're, what are we gonna do here? You got some choices. You can create a new contact one at a time. You can type and paste in contacts. Here's the best way to do it in my opinion is presumably if you can get your contacts into an Excel or CS CSV file in this case, same basic thing, just depends on how you save it. You're gonna click that. And now it says you're gonna upload from file. Well, so I could just browse or I could drag and drop. I'll show you the drag and drop function here. So I could go into my lists here that I've created and let's just do, uh, uh, today let's just do chemicals, here we go. So this is, this is one that I could create. Um, that would be uh, based on a chemicals industry, basically what I'm doing. So I can just drag and drop that here. It's gonna load that list. And you notice it's going to uh, say that a lot of these fields are matched. You see where it says matched right there? That means you don't have to mess, mess with it at all. You can just leave it as is. If they say unmatched, you can ignore it. Don't worry about it. But what you do need ideally, first name, last name, email address. Those are, that's what you really need. The rest of it's kind of icing on the cake, okay? So let's keep, let's continue. We're then going to, um, uh, so we have to upload that now. Watch this here, upload. And this might take a few seconds here. And it says it's imported. And if you didn't come in, why? Probably because they didn't have an email address in the file. Excellent. So that's all completed. 
And now we're going to go in and, so now we're switching gears. We're gonna go from the list import. Remember we talked about this briefly. And so we're gonna create the list. We already did that. Uh, remember that you do need to use contacts that are presumed to be opted in with this, with any kind of system like this. That means that they've signed up on some sort of a form with you or you're their client and you receive regular communications, that sort of thing. Uh, the caveat here is I'm not a lawyer. Just check with your legal counsel if you're worried about this. But um, so we're gonna, you wanna save that list in a CSV format. That means comma separated value. If it's an Excel file, you just do file, save as, and choose comma separated value or CSV. And then you can upload that list. So now that we've uploaded it, we can go in and create a campaign here. This is the fun part. So I go to campaigns and we could just start by creating a new campaign. I have other campaigns that I've done, but we're gonna go up to the upper right and say, create a campaign. And there's all sorts of wonderful things you could do eventually. But today we're just gonna show you how to send a simple email blast to a list of people. This is what I think people struggle with a lot is the simple stuff. Then it brings you, it says selected template. Oh my gosh, look at all these pretty birthday party things and everything like that. Well, um, if you've already used this before, you can use recent, and, and that's what I'm gonna do here. And I'm gonna just show you an example of what a template looks like. In a future training session, I'm going to uh, get into more how to create your own templates. It's not that hard. Basically, it looks kind of like this. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit, since that was a previous one, we're gonna edit this so that, um, you know, I'm gonna change this from banks and credit unions to manufacturers. That's just because I'm creating one from an existing template. So I'll just type in the new uh, the new uh, pre-header. And this is our business, by the way, Profit Serum for Outlook. You can put it, you put in your first name or your from name rather, from the email address and the reply to email address. And this is important because usually you probably want them just to reply to your regular email address. So it's not going through some other kind of gyration there. Once you've done that, you can, you can see that now that that uh, pre-header is set, the subject line is set, who it's from, who it's to. And I wanted to point out something, it's a little bit hard to figure out sometimes. It's just how do you create like a, a first name title? Well, it's that little uh, squiggly bracket with the words first name capitalized and with a space between them. You do have to get that right. And then the content is mostly just kind of content like you'd write in an email, but a link uh, is a hyperlink. And so if you, if you want to include a hyperlink, I use it to have people book appointments directly on my calendar. It says um, you can book an appointment. And so that is a link. And it's this little symbol here. It looks like a chain link. And you can see that I want to create it as a, it's usually a web page is what you want. And that's my calendar. By the way, if you want to book a meeting with me, make note of that. Uh, happy to happy to help you if I can. But anyway, this is the, the, um, the link that I put in there. And that way, when the email gets sent, every, anyone that clicks on that can actually just book a meeting on my calendar. It could be your website, could be anything, anything with the URL. And then down below, you might want to put like, you know, your final uh, closing remarks, best regards, et cetera, your email signature picture, if you want, that sort of thing. And then we're going to just say continue now. And uh, we're going to go into the next phase of this. So the next, the next aspect of this is to start to um, figure out what list you're going to, first of all, send it to. So up here on top, you have to, you, I've got a, a lot of, uh, email lists in here, and I'm gonna choose the one here that's the chemicals one. And you can see that there's other options that I could still edit these, but I already filled them in. So we're gonna just leave that. You can take a preview of your email if you want, but we already did that. But here's an interesting and important thing. You can choose who um, you want to get an early results email sent to. So I'll just put my name in there. And I usually put it for a later date, you know, the next day or whenever, next week. And I'll give you a little tip here. Turns out that most emails are open the most by um, when they're sent on a Tuesday morning, bright and early. I'm doing this on a Tuesday, so this will be Wednesday. I'm in Pacific time, so I'm gonna choose kind of a little bit, um, not exact time, but I'm gonna do 4.30 a.m., which would be 7.30 a.m. Eastern time. And these happen to be statistically uh, optimal times to schedule your email blast. 